What's up, everybody? It's Stockwell from Vaporite. Uh, we've been getting a lot of questions about RBAs. What is an RBA? How do you build an RBA? Why would you want to use an RBA? Uh, I'm just here to kind of clear some of that stuff up for you, answer some questions you might have, and take you through a little tutorial on building your first coil. Um, first thing you're going to need is some kind of RBA, whether that's a dripping addy like I have here, um, some kind of tank atomizer, or, you know, there's a lot of different kinds, but we're going to start real simple, um, just a two post dripping atomizer, um, mainly for flavor and vapor production. Um, now there's a lot of different devices you can build a coil for. Uh, we have some regulated options like the SVD, the Provari. Um, to unregulated devices or mechanical mods. Uh, now the difference there is the amount of power and the safety features on board. Uh, the two regulated mods have some kind of chipset in there that's going to regulate the amount of power coming off the battery. You can adjust the voltage, you can adjust the wattage. Uh, basically, you know, more power is going to be more vapor, um, less power is going to be a little bit less vapor. Uh, the second classification is a mechanical mod or an unregulated device. I have two examples of those right here. And that's basically just a metal tube. Uh, when you push the button, it creates an open circuit and you're running straight off the battery voltage. Now, while that is great, there is absolutely no safety built in there. So if there's a short in your coil or, you know, something funny happens, um, that battery's going to vent and you don't want that to happen. So when we're just getting started, we're going to build a coil for a regulated device. Um, there is a little bit of a limitation there. If you're building a coil for a regulated device, that means you're going to have to build a coil with um, a resistance higher than at least 1.3. So we're going to shoot for around 2 ohms on this one. Basically, that means it's going to take a little bit more power to get up to temperature, um, but we can do that on a regulated device. Uh, some other things that you're going to need. Um, you definitely need some type of resistance checker, whether that's you know the, uh, the ohm clock on your mod, or a separate box piece that has a switch that can just check your resistance right there. You can also use just a standard old multimeter, just a two-prong positive negative multimeter. Great tools to have, absolutely necessary if you're gonna be building coils. Uh, a couple other things you're gonna need, a little bit of tools, a couple little eyeglass screwdrivers, You've got a Phillips and a flathead just in case. Um, actually, this atomizer has thumb screws, so we won't need those, but you might on yours. Um, I always carry a dental pick. This is just good for poking around coils, you know, getting out some hot spots, spots that are burning a little bit hotter than others. Uh, just a regular pair of scissors for cutting the canthal and the silica. We've got a torch, get those machine oils off all the metals. All right, so the two main ingredients in building a coil are canthal wire and some kind of wick system. Um, there are different gauges of wire, like 32 gauge or 28 gauge. Uh, today we're going to be using 32. It has a little bit higher resistance per foot, and that's going to be good to get us where we need to be on a regulated device. Um, as far as wicking, there's a lot of different wicking options. There's just regular little silica, tried and true, great wick. Uh, there's eco wool, which is a hollow braided silica. Uh, it just has a little bit higher burn temperature, so you can it can handle a lot more power. And then we have um, just organic unbleached cotton. This is a cheap good cheap way to do it. Um, you can't dry burn cotton though, um, but it is cheap, easy to find, good, uh, good wick. Um, all right, so let's get into it. 32 gauge wire, um, if we're trying to get about two ohms, it's gonna take uh, just about two inches, probably like an, an inch and three quarters, but we're gonna cut about two inches, that way we have enough um, length for the legs to wrap around these posts on the RBA. It's always good to, to overcut rather than undercut or else you're going to go through a lot of wire and be pretty frustrated. So we got our scissors, we got our wire, let's get to cutting. Now this stuff will spring out at you, so it's a good idea just to hold it in place, get it back where you need it to be so it'll stay put. Perfect. One of the first things that I always do. Um, just kind of grab onto it, take it over the scissors uh, like a ribbon at Christmas. That's going to get any kinks out of the wire. Kinks are going to add resistance, and we want it to be right where we think it's going to be. So get those out of there. 
All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do after straightening out that wire is uh, run a torch over it real quick. This wire is, you know, all lubed up with some machine oil, um, and that stuff's not really good to inhale. Probably won't kill you, but it's probably not too great for you either. Uh, so we're going to take our handy little torch here. Just going to run it over the wire, get it nice and glowing, and just slowly run it all the way down the length of the wire. There we go. She's all cleaned up, ready to go. Next thing you're going to want to do is cut a length of wick. We're just going to use regular silica. Probably should have already had this out of the bag. All right, now this stuff is a really good wicking material, but it frays really easily. So another thing you can do with your torch, just run it over the length of the silica as well. It's going to make it a little bit more rigid. It's going to keep some of that slack off of there and make it easier to cut too. Then at the end if you want to just burn one spot for a little bit, get it nice and hot and then snip right there. Should help with some of that fray. Perfect. So now you got your wick, you got your wire, we're ready to start building. This is a two millimeter silica. It's a pretty good starting uh, diameter. It's nice and thick, and um, plus when you double it over, it makes a nice rigid surface to start wrapping your coil on. So we are going to take this, just fold it in half. Then I'm going to take the wire. We'll definitely leave enough room for a leg here on this side. And we're just going to start wrapping. Just bring it around. You don't want it too tight, or else it'll choke the wick and stop the juice from flowing through it. Uh, but too loose is going to cause hot spots, and that's just going to taste burnt. So we're going to try and get this just perfect. You just want the wire to hug the wick. Not too tight, not too loose. We'll just give this a few wraps here. And if it looks a little janky, it's not too big of a deal. You can always fix that with the dental pick later. Make sure everything's nice and evenly spaced, or at least try to. Just get a couple more wraps in here. So that's like six or seven wraps of 32 gauge canthal around some doubled over two mil wick. Uh, let's go ahead and attach it to our post, see what the resistance is. So you got your base, your atomizer in one hand, you got your wrap coil in the other, it's time to throw it on those posts. Just wrap it around the sides, get it underneath those thumb screws there, and just kind of bend it around so it stays in place. Then go ahead and start cranking them down. These are a little bit easier to use than, uh, than screws. All right, so it's probably a little bit hard to see on camera, uh, but I'll try and get a little bit closer and, and show you what's happening here. We've got our coil wrapped around the wick. Um, you had these two legs coming off that coil. Basically what you want to do is get them underneath these screws here on the post and uh, capture them down. Now you don't have to wrap around the post, you know, a couple times. Just really get it underneath one side and tighten that, that screw down a little bit. Do that on both sides, one wire through each, and uh, we're ready to test resistance. All right, so there's a couple different ways to test resistance. Um, a lot of mods like the SVD and the Pravari have a resistance clock built in, uh, which is pretty handy. You don't have to go out and buy, you know, a multimeter or a box resistance checker. Um, but I like my box checker, so we're going to check it right there. All right, so it's 2.79. It's a little bit overshot of what I wanted to do, but that's okay. We're putting it on a regulated mod, so I can just give it a little bit more power than I was planning. Not bad. Ready to clip off those uh, those leads on the end. That's just the little bit of wire that's left over. You don't want that over there because it's going to touch and short, and uh, that's just not good. So we'll just clip that off. Try and get as close to the post as you can, and just clip those down nice and short. All right, check it one more time. 2.79, not too bad. We're ready to uh, throw it on a device and get it glowing. 
All right, now we've got the uh, the RDA attached to your device. It's always a good idea to double check the resistance on your mod. So we'll go ahead and do that. Two point seven, cool. All right, so we'll run that at let's see, five point seven sounds good to me. Give it a go. Let's watch it blow. All right, not too bad. Not the best looking coil, but that's all right. That's what the dental picks for. So no matter how nasty the coil looks, you can always kind of space it out, get everything evenly spaced uh, using a dental pick. And it's really easy to do. All you got to do is uh, hold the button down, let it get nice and hot, let go of the button, start nudging those coils around. It's not a huge deal. I've had some super ugly coils vape really, really nice. But for the sake of the video, I'll show you how to do it. All right, still not beautiful, but uh, it's lighting up in the center, spreading out to the posts. That's exactly what you want. It's glowing nice and hot. All right, it's ready for juice. There we go. This is one of my favorite juices here. It's called Sinus Paradise. It's coming out uh, at vape right here pretty soon. Really, really great cinnamon vape. So we'll just load up that coil there, get it nice and primed up. Perfect. She's vaping. That's great. So get the coil all primed up. We do have a little bit long wicks here. You can tuck those in um, underneath the coil, around the post, however you want to do it. I'll just go ahead and throw this cap on there. All right, now we got the cap. It's all primed up. Give her a couple more drops here. She's ready to vape. Beautiful. Absolutely wonderful. All right, so as you can see from the vapor production, that's one of the main benefits as to why you'd use an RBA. Uh, another benefit is just the consistency of it. Um, you are responsible for building the coils, um, so you get a lot better performance and uh, you know less of like when you're buying a clear miser coil, sometimes you get a dud or tastes burnt or it just doesn't work very well. When you're using an RBA and you actually built that coil yourself, it's a lot easier to go back and figure out where you messed it up and it's really easy to fix too. Uh, another benefit is the price point. You know, when you're building your own coils, it's pennies to the dollar uh, compared to like buying replacement coils or cartomizers or whatever else you might be using. Uh, but the, the flavor is, is unparalleled with an RBA. You're not gonna find anything that uh, gives you the truest flavor of whatever juice you're vaping. Um, and the vapor production, you know, who doesn't like blowing big clouds? Um, so yeah, that's it. Nice high res, um, safe RBA. As always, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. I hope it was informative. Hope you learned a thing or two. If you still have questions, you can always shoot us an email at help at vaporide.com. You can stop in uh, either at Woodstock or Atlanta, talk to one of our helpful teammates. They'll answer any other questions that you have or direct you towards somebody who can. Um, always, uh, you know, check up on our Facebook for updates about RBA classes. We're going to be running those down in Atlanta, um, at least one night a week. So check it out. Um, check out our blog and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Peace.